please introduce yourself? Yeah, my name is Emilia Pires, and I'm the Minister of Finance for Timor Leste. Excellent. So now, Emilia, what were your thoughts after meeting with these young men from Project Plus One? Well, it was very nice to meet them, to see how committed and how enthusiastic they are in projects to help countries like mine, and in, in particular, you know, like a specific project to help a clinic, which is trying to help people uh, get over uh, diseases like tuberculosis. And I, I really like the way they're so interested in looking for uh, solutions, not just to, to, to help those people, but the impact in the longer term. Well, how could systems be put in place to ensure that in the future, work like the, the Dan Murphy Clinic in Timor-Leste work on its own and is sustainable. So that's very interesting. Great. Um, so in your opinion, what is, um, what's missing in the Millennium Development Goals? I know you spoke a little bit about this yesterday. Okay, what, what happens is that for fragile states to get to the point uh, to work towards Millennium Development Goals, they need to do a few things. What is Millennium Development Goals about? It's at the end of the day, it's about ending poverty and moving forward in development. Now, for you to do that, first of all, in countries where they're going through conflict, you need to stop the conflict itself. And then when you stop the conflict, you need to build a state so that that state delivers the, the services, which are like education, health, agriculture, and, and that's what is going to make an impact on the development uh, on the MDGs. Now, that's what's missing: measurements on how you stop in conflict and how you build in the state. And this is the work that we have come up with. The when I say we, a group of fragile states, about 17 of us, and we call ourselves the Little G7 Plus, with uh, our development partners together through the international dialogue for peace building and state building we came up with five peace building state building goals which are the prerequisites to the mdgs and they are what are they they are uh, legitimate politics like you need to include people when you're building a, a nation okay and to stop conflict you need to include everybody uh, the second goal is security you need to provide security because without security how are people going to the farm to produce products so that the kids can eat off or the population how are children going to school how are doctors going to attend patients if there is no stability if there is no security so the number psg number two is to do with security which is not in the mdgs the third one some sort of access to justice because if you don't have that people tend to take justice into their own hands and if they do that automatically you go back to violence so you have to have some sort of system, be that traditional or whatever, where people feel that they can take their uh, uh, issues and somebody's hearing about it and trying to resolve. And, number f and that's number three. Number four, PSG4, is to do with economic foundation, jobs, jobs, and jobs, for the, especially the youth. Because most of the time, if you look at the fragile state, the majority of their population is young people. Young people, often unskilled young people, no education, no jobs, then what are they going to do with all this energy? They may end up fighting each other and then the fight uh, becomes bigger and then it involves neighborhoods and then it could easily erupt in conflict. Last but not least, most of those countries have their own natural resources. They are really, really rich in natural resources. So they need to know how to manage those natural resources so that they can deliver the services. And that's when you start getting into the MDGs. <laughs> so it's very easy, isn't it? Very simple. Very simple. <laughs> very, but people don't do it. Yeah. I am very surprised that until now, after decades and decades of institutions working in this field, they've not even come up with the PSGs. And now we've come up with the PSGs and now we are trying to lobby the United Nations, which is made up of all these 193 states or nations, to kind of adopt it so that it starts going down to all the agencies when they do their programs in fragile states they should really use the PSGs so they can monitor whether the state is moving out for fragility or not. Mm. Okay and so um, 
what inspired you to get involved in development? What made you realize this is what you wanted to do? Well, um, uh, since a child, I've always, I read a lot. And then, uh, and then when I see what is around me and then when, uh, what I read about, the two things do not match. And then I'm thinking like, why are some people so better off and why are others not? Why is this happening? What is wrong with this world? And so by instinct, I guess, I started to get involved. I started to get involved first in my own country when there was such a big injustice, when we were invaded and then people were being killed and I felt like I survived. What if I had happened to be back at home and what would I would like to have from other children that are well off? What would I expect from them? And so that kind of made me, okay, I'll work for making sure that social justice comes back. And so now that we got our country back, the fighting wasn't over. Because, okay, now the fight is against poverty. The fight is to get these people who have never, who have, for many, many decades, were not exposed to good education, good health, good food, good nutrition. How do we fix all that? So that their children becomes like any other normal child that you see in Australia, you see here in America, in any other part, because everybody's supposed to have the same rights, you know? Everybody's supposed to enjoy this beautiful world. How come some are and some are not? And that's how I ended up just trying to level the playing field, that's all. Excellent, and we're very glad that you did. <laughs> And so now what advice would you like to leave youth with? What final piece of inspiration? Well, I'm hoping that the youth will uh, take on this challenge and, and together they can put a stop to the way of life for the 1.5 billion people that are right now are living in poverty and in fragile states. We should not allow this to happen. So do not go for another generation having this status quo. It's not right. And so the youth of now, and I think from experience, like from past history, we see what we give comes back to you, okay? And therefore, you might as well plant the right seed now and collect it afterwards. And, and do something just to make sure that those 1.5 people, 1.5 billion people, have access to what we all have right now. Great. Thank you so much, Minister. It was Thank a pleasure you. speaking with you.